Joe's Valley is a sandstone boulder area located in like central eastern Utah by a small town called Price. Kind of sort of Waco-ish if I had to pick any area that reminded me of it in a way with the weird edges and holds and just strange shapes. Good steep edge climbing. Um, something you don't get too much from in an area around here. Joe's Valley was discovered in the early 90s by um, climbers like Boone Speed and uh, Jeff Pedersen, Tim Hannock. Steve and Jeffrey and Jeff Baldwin. And someone's like John Cronin would be down there. And that was back when the right fork and the left fork were the only areas known really. And I had a really good time. I was light. Did some good bouldering back then. The left fork of Joe's Valley is probably the first area people bouldered in. I think it's actually technically called Straight Canyon or something like that. The left fork tends to house the higher, more classic, cleaner boulder problems. There's a bunch of problems around there. Jason Kill put up a bunch of interesting, harder problems. There's tons of good classics up in there from the Angler and the Riverside area. Anything down by the Riverside was cool because it's just in a cool setting with sandy beach with boulders and a pretty emerald colored river. Some really hard ones, classic highball, the wind below. The Trent's Mom boulder is really classic. If you could drop that in the middle of Waco or the Buttermilks or anything and it would be one of the classic boulders no matter where you put it. One of the unique things about Trent's Mom is uh, just the style of movement. Um, it tends to have a lot of big throws on it. It's like one after the other, you know? And um, it has some pretty cool crimpers. Most of the crimpers here are in cut, and the crimpers on Trent's Mom are uh, pretty flat and slopey. So a little different than all the other places you find. The top out's not so bad, it's a little committing. It's a little scary, um, but I had a good spotter, so yeah, right. The Powerline Boulder is an amazing boulder, it's probably one of the coolest and recently found climbs here, and everybody I know that goes to it and climbs on it or has been there falls in love with it, you know. Um, the wind from below itself is, I think, is the first climb I got done there by Jason Kill. And uh, really beautiful highball um, consists of uh, some big dynamic moves, big dynos on little crimpers. Pretty decent landing. Um, not so bad of a sketchy top out, which is good because it's really tall. Um, but you definitely want some spotters and some tags. My first impressions of Joe's, well, I had heard that Joe's, all the boulders were really close to the road, and so I was kind of not psyched about climbing next to cars whizzing by and stuff like that. A lot of people think it's right next to the road, or all the stuff's right next to the road, and as far as the real old school stuff goes, that is actually pretty true because if there's a thousand boulders everywhere, the first ones you're going to walk to are going to be the ones that are like 20 feet off the road. It's actually off the main highways. Um, what the roads exist for is coal mines. Um, that's why those roads were put in, that's why they're there, and there's zero traffic out there. You're kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and you have beautiful rivers and... Roadside bouldering out there, it still feels like you're in an area in the wilderness. I mean, if you've never been to the desert before, I mean, it's obviously a beautiful place to come and kind of set your eyes on, like, this beautiful scenery. 
I just really like the desert scenery. You can see the San Rafael swell out in the distance. Lots of deer running in the road, which is kind of weird, and deer eating next to cows. It's just really beautiful. The Riverside area is kind of the good meeting ground and all around climbing area for everyone. It has V zeros on the perfect nice rounded pockets all the way up to a heinous nothing slabberette. Um, it's a good place to warm up, it's right by the river. When it tends to be a bit warmer you can go hang out there. You can actually swim in the river right there, it's deep enough. And then it's shaded. It tends to get shade and then it stays cooler around that area for sure. So it's a good warm up, casual place to climb. Kelly's Arrette is located on the next boulder down from Morel and it is a high ball V5. Um, you start out on some fairly good underclings and you kind of go up the arete to a very <laughs> sketchy top out, or at least I thought so. Um, you grab some slopers at the very top of the boulder and you're pretty stretched out. And then you have to get a really, really high right foot and rock over and mantle pretty high up. And there's not many holds on top of the boulder, so you're all the way rocking over and right away. I think a lot of people get scared away from it because it's kind of technical and they're not judged to top out. And when you kind of get up top, you kind of scared. When you spot it, it's got you, you know, you got a nice landing, but usually when you're that high off the ground, there's no judge. You kind of get excited. I promised I would never do Kelly's Arette again because it scared me so bad, but a good friend of mine kind of talked me into doing it a couple more times than I wanted to. <laughs> Joe's Valley is sandstone, and many people say that it is choss, but it is not choss. It's very beautiful, solid sandstone. The sandstone there tends to be pretty friendly to your skin. Some sharp holds, but as far as texture, it's the best texture you can get. It's almost like climbing in the gym, like some of the holds, it looks like somebody took a Dremel tool and made like a perfect pocket and perfect edges. Um, it's kind of unlike areas like Waco or Bishop where your skin gets really conditioned and thick. It's a definite rare breed of sandstone boulders out there.
Um, finding boulders at Joe's is kind of like a, I don't know, it's pretty easy, you know I mean? It's like picking out a Mormon in the middle of the mall in Provo. It's like, you just drive right up and they're right in front of you and you're ready to go, you know? Like. It's as hard as looking onto the mountainside and seeing any one of the thousands of boulders scattered across the landscape. If you have to walk farther than like five minutes to a boulder, that's pretty rare, even for there, even though you could, but to get to almost everything there, it's pretty quick. First time I saw Wheels of Fire, I was excited because it looked absolutely beautiful, but I was actually terrified because it was one of the higher problems that I've done. And also the landing looked pretty sketchy. There's, it's kind of right on the edge of the hill and it seems like you could just fall and roll down the hill into the road. Kind of a committing top out, and especially because the landing kind of scares a lot of people away when you first look at it, it kind of looks sketchy, but you no know, one's got hurt yet. Wheels of Fire is kind of like the Joe's Valley classic mid-grade problem. Um, it's right when it gets high, it ends, and the moves, it's crazy moves out of steep wall with good kind of pockety, rounded out pockets, so it's definitely kind of like our Midnight Lightning in a way. Uh, it's just like a super standard classic like U6 for Joe's Valley. Um, like people travel from all over probably just to get on that climb. It's a really, really awesome problem. It's really fun and I like to do it every time I go up there. On the same boulder as Wills of Fire is another classic U10 called Beyond Life, um, which involves some really powerful heel hooking. Um, kind of hurts your hamstrings when you're done. <laughs> Some uh, sharp little crimpers and nice jug mono to a pretty easy top out. It's kind of like a good entry level hard problem to do there. The moves are incredible, the rock is perfect, perfect height.
Finger Hut's one of the more steep climbs here in Joe's Valley. Um, tends to have some really nice in-cut crimpers, a little bit like Waco. Um, you gotta place your fingers just right behind the holes, otherwise it's almost impossible to hold on. Um, the rest of the wall kind of blocks your knuckles from being able to fully engage into a crimp, so you kind of get stuck in this halfway open Jones or crimp. Kind of sucks, but if you're a girl and you have little tiny fingers, you can just reel it in. It's a fucking jug. <laughs> and then just a really fun finish on big jugs. Nice, easy top out. The next area you'll come to on the right side of the road is called the warm-up boulder. And here you have a classic V4 called Better Than Coffee. The first time I saw <laughs> Better Than Coffee, I thought it looked pretty easy, but I was a little bit sketched out about how high it was because I'm a baby and I don't like high balls. It's just a crack that goes straight up all the way up the boulder and it's pretty high. And when I got on it, I realized that it was gonna be kind of difficult for me because I have no idea how to crack climb or lie back, which is the movement you do all the way to the top. <laughs> but I finally got my shit together and I got up it and I learned how to lie back and it was pretty fun. Uh, depending on the season is where to camp. Uh, winter time, tend to camp down in the BLM land by the New Joes. It gets morning sun faster, so you warm up quicker and whatnot. Um, there's a few in the left fork, right down next to the river in this kind of kayak pullout zone. When it's warmer out and whatnot, camping in the right fork's really nice. Big pine trees, it's national forest, you can camp anywhere up in the right fork, kind of right before you get to Bukes area, there's a spot where you can camp. The Bukes area, which is also located right by some camping, um, it has some really technical pockety climbing. The first problem you'll come to is the Bukes problem. It's a V3 and it has some really beautiful pockets all the way up the face.
The next problem you'll come to is the bowling ball problem, and it's a classic V4, and they call it the bowling ball problem because your starting left hand are three holds, there are three little pockets that look like they came right out of a bowling ball. The next boulder you'll come to is on the left side of the road and it's called the Umwa boulder because U-M-W-A is carved onto the boulder and it's really easy access. You basically drive right up to the boulder. There is a classic V5 called Rug Right and there is a classic V3 on the south side that has some really fun big movements with some big jugs. And there's also a classic V7 called Stompin' Hippies. Um, the style here in Joe's Valley um, is kind of unlike a lot of other areas. It's very technical. Not a whole lot of steep stuff here, just kind of like 45 and up to more horizontal and lots of slabs. And, I mean, there is steep stuff, but a lot of, a lot of the good stuff is just gently overhanging. V6 is definitely the classic grade to chase. You can do mileage on it, or I mean, plenty of project in your V6s out there. So the no substance boulder is over in the right fork and that's kind of one of the problems that was maybe, it's like pre trince mom but uh, not quite old school but at this point it's almost getting kind of old school. Um, it's right next to the road so it's real obvious so it's not like it was hidden or anything like that and it was one that Steve took a liking to. Me and Jeff Baldwin, Jared Roth, we all kept trying to do this thing. Poor beta, just kept trying to just scoot the lip along and whatnot. It took quite a few days to do it due to the time of the season when we were trying it. It was warm. And I just kept thinking, as soon as it cools down, we can do this thing. And we kept trying and trying. And then the temperature started dropping, the season started coming around. And I went down there with a friend of mine, Tyler Davis. And he's like, why don't you just go all the way to the pocket? <laughs> I was like, you're crazy, There's, that's far away. And he went up there and went for it and stuck his hands in the pocket and fell off. And I was like, Holy cow! And I went there and did it next try, just jumping all the way to the pocket. No substance is one of the few climbs here that is like consistently slopey. Um, it's really technical. Your feet really suck, um, and they're kind of you're kind of off balance the whole time. You're trying to like keep opposition on the slopey rail, and uh, usually you want pretty good conditions so your your skin will stick on the slope. Got kind of a fun little committing top out. Do a nice big move up to a gas dome pocket, bring your feet up high, cross to the corner, put a piece of the rock, and then uh, just kind of throw your heel up and rock up and over to a big jug. Nice and exciting. You got a tree below you that you probably don't want to fall down onto. Uh, just uphill, 
and up canyon slightly from no additives. There's a boulder and on the back uphill side of it is this really cool pretty gray wave face with a bunch of pockets. It's real cool. As soon as I saw it I got really excited because it looked like exactly my style. It was short, not a high ball. It was a little bit overhung and it looked like there were some bigger powerful moves. Um, it's a really pretty pockety face and it's amazingly fun. I was excited when I found that. One of those things where you walk around assuming you've already walked past that boulder a million times and then you were just like, oh wait a minute. I obviously haven't walked past this boulder before because I would have noticed this. Same thing like when I found Trent's mom, I was just like, wait a minute, this shouldn't be here. You can see it right from the road, but for some reason no one's ever walked to it. And I don't know. Uh, just up the hill um, from No Substance is a team effort where uh, you can see from the road it's a big, like, giant boulder with an obvious, like, crowd coming out the left side of it. Um, it's got a really, really hard start, truck smooth. You have a pretty bad sloper right hand and you have to try to keep your left foot on and jump to this really cool, nice pink. And, uh, you just gotta flex your stomach and hold on to the ride. Um, the top out's a little kind of like off balance, but you, uh, you just have to slap the right hold. Go right over the top, it's not so bad. Got a nice landing, get some good spotters. And uh, just up the road from there, up the canyon on the dirt road, um, you'll find the, uh, the incredible hole which is a pretty amazingly stout climb for its grade, I think. Um, there's kind of a, a dual top out going on. Um, a lot of people get suckered into traversing out left up this big juggy rail. So then you're going to find yourself kind of stuck in some bushes. I don't know if you like bushwhacking, but I don't. So I kind of stay to the right and uh, kind of throw my heel up where my hands are on the jug and just kind of pull straight up over the top and it's really mellow. Jurassic Flakes was my longtime nemesis because I thought I was getting on a V4, and it turns out that it's like a V9. <laughs> it's maybe a V6. <laughs> um, it's really fucking hard for its grade, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, it's really beautiful, though. It's intimidating because it's really steep, and the landing grades away from it. So it, when you get on it, you realize that you're higher than you thought you were. Um, it's really sustained climbing all the way through and then it's desperate all the way to the lip and then you finally get matched on the lip and you're like, yes, <laughs> it's over, I'm at the top, but then the top is fucking harder than the whole rest of the climb and I fell at the top so many goddamn times, <laughs> but it feels really good once you finally pull it all off. So New Joe's is located about uh, 10 minutes before the left and right fork. Um, you basically just drive up Highway 57, um, turn right onto a dirt road at mile marker 10, follow a little Jeep trail, and, and it takes you right to Area 51. So um, New Joe's is kind of different from all the other areas. 
Um, it's super highly concentrated with lots of easier climbs and just all in one area, you know. You don't have to drive around, which is kind of nice. Um, there's super good classics. I mean, Pocket Rocket and Warm Me Up Scotty and Snake Mouth and Pimpin' Jeans and the Planet of the Apes Boulder. And then also, you know, probably the one classic climb that everybody comes here to climb is Nerve Damage. How many times have you seen her legs? A lot. I thought she had pretty big legs. Are Sage, we... we're not going that way. Oh. Sage, come here. Where are we going? We're going to Nerd Oh. You're safe to get out and do some climbing today. <laughs> not get stabbed by bushes. <laughs> Nerve damage is always fun to climb on. Nice highball classic. Get your knees rolling a little bit. Knees rolling? Yep. What, did, what does that mean? Use your imagination. <laughs>
Ethics of Joe's Valley. Let's see. No heckling the rednecks. Don't really piss off the local guys, even though sometimes they drive by and shoot at your tents and stuff. It's kind of annoying. Don't wear any gay tights to the chicks rocking roost. I had some drunk rednecks drive by and shoot at us a couple times once, but I think they were just joking around. No feeding the animals. Don't shit around the rock line. No pooping under the black lung. Always bury your shit tickets. Finger tape, especially. I know all you injured people out there like leaving your tape everywhere. It's not cool. You got to pick that up. And people from are frowned upon. One thing Joe's has is pretty much no regulations whatsoever. It's out in the middle of redneck land. The best part about it is the freedom of it. No restrictions to anything. You can set up a tent wherever you want. There's no rangers following you around. You don't have to pay a tour guide. It's climb on whatever you want. But that doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. There's certain spots that are private property you're not supposed to go on. Up in the New Joe's area, the parking lot uh, is on an oil pad that's on by Texaco, I think. So you're not allowed to camp on it. You're not allowed to have fires on their little cleared out section. You're not supposed to spray paint Area 51 all over the uh, big electrical box. think about Joe's Valley, I think of endless possibilities. Um, every time I seem to think Joe's Valley is tapped out and done, I'll walk another 10 feet, 20 feet, 10 minutes up the road, 20 minutes that way, and then it's just more boulders. So when I think of Joe's, I think of just potential for new stuff to be done always. And I think a lot of people are finding that from all over the states. And this place could have just as many hard climbs as there is in Waco or Bishop and other areas of the world. People are going to realize more and more how good of a climbing destination this is and how it really is another Waco or Bishop. There's not really anywhere else in the world that I've ever been that has resembled Joe's in any way, really. The Rock definitely has enough features to climb up blank stuff. Someone just needs to climb them. <laughs> it's all waiting. If you're at home and bored and sick of your local area and you want to come put up some hard first ascents, Joe's Valley is a place to be.
What the fuck? <laughs> ah!